Hey, welcome to part four of deploy a Python web application on Linode from scratch. This one is all about actually building our web application using fast API. Now, if you've never built a web application before, this is going to be a lot of new things for you. And I'm really excited to show you. But if you have just realize that we're only scratching the surface of what you can do with a Python web application. And this is much more about getting it into production onto an actual host than anything else. Now, this is part four of the series. So be sure that you check the description for links for all of the other parts in this series. And there's also time codes down there as well. So you can jump around as you need. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so what I'm going to be doing in this one is downloading Python 3 and creating a virtual environment. So that's going to be Python 3-M VENV period. Now, of course, if you don't have Python installed or you don't know what a virtual environment manager is, we're going to discuss that in a moment. But if you do have Python installed, do something along these lines. And to be very specific to what I'm doing, I'm actually going to be using Python 3.7. So before I actually execute that, let's go ahead and talk about why it is that there's different versions of Python and why we use a virtual environment in the first place. So if we actually go to python.org, what we'll see here is a download tab and you can click on one of your systems, like whatever system you're currently working on. This is not for the Linode. This is just for our local development environment. I'm on a Mac, but the same thing works for Windows. And if we scroll all the way down, um, we're going to see a bunch of different versions. Look at that Python 2.0.1. It came out in June 22nd, 2001. So that is 20 years old and we can still download and use it. I do not recommend that you do that, especially as a beginner. There might be cases that even as a beginner, you would want to use that. But the general idea is over time, new versions come out. And look at this, even Python 2.4 has a Mac OS installer. I would imagine Windows does as well. So I'm actually not gonna be using Python 2. Instead, I'm gonna be using Python 3. That's the most modern version of Python. And if you're a beginner, the differences between the two are mostly minor, uh, but we do wanna use Python 3 because that is what we'll be using on our fast API application that requires Python 3.6 and above. And there's another reason which we'll get into in a moment. So what we're gonna do here is actually download the version of Python that we need that will match our production environment. That is our Linode's Python version. So that will mean that we do a couple things. If we jump back into our SSH session into our Linode and I say, who am I? I should see that it is that CFE user or whatever username you decided. And if I list things out right now, I'm currently in var WW, right? Um, and so, and also I can tell that I'm in an SSH session because of this. So what I wanna do here is I wanna check what version of Python I have. So if I just type out Python dash capital V, I see that it says 2.7.16. And right off the bat, you might be like, well, wait a minute, I don't wanna use Python 2, we just went over that. So oftentimes what you'll see on these systems is Python 3 dash V. So actually writing out Python 3, you will see a different version of Python. And so this is what we'll end up using in production on the remote host on the Linode server. We'll be using that Python 3 and whatever that version is. And in this case, it's 3.7. So the first two numbers are what's important here, not so much the last number. Certainly the last number can be important, but in this case, we're just gonna go off of the first two numbers. So Python 3.7. And so if I actually jump back into the downloads on python.org for my system, you know, I can actually scroll through here looking for the latest version of Python 3.7. So it looks like Python 3.7.10 is the latest version, but notice there's nothing in here that says a installer, right? So ignoring the first part of this, depending on your system, but we want to find something that says installer. The installer significantly decreases the barriers to actually get Python installed, especially if you're a beginner, but even if you're more advanced, you don't necessarily have to compile the correct version. It just takes a long time. So what I wanna do is actually look for an installer. So 3.7.9, I can definitely download this installer right here, and I'm gonna let it do that. Notice that it's only like 30 megabytes. It's not really that big. I think the Windows one might be a little bit bigger, 
but overall, um, it's not really that big of a, of a program. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and of course, if you're on Windows, you, you're gonna wanna do the same, and we just wanna accept a lot of the defaults here, right? And so once I install it, um, I you know I have to put in my password. Uh, I got to do all of those sort of standard installation processes uh, to get Python up and running. And so I actually have a different version of Python 3 on my machine already. So we'll see if it actually creates conflicts. Uh, it certainly can uh, because you use different versions of Python. You might actually run into conflicts that happen. But I'm going to actually let this finish building and then we'll come back. So it's not quite done yet, but something I wanted to mention for you Windows users, it's gonna ask you to put it to the path. And the answer is yes, you absolutely wanna put it in the path. And you probably notice that ding that it actually um, finished. But the idea is path. Do you wanna add it as a path variable? The answer to that is yes. Um, I do have installation videos for Python on Windows. So let me know in the comments if you need that. Um, because it can get a little tricky sometimes on Windows. Um, but now that I have Python 3.7 installed, I'm gonna go back into my local terminal window and I'm gonna type out Python 3.7 dash capital V and see that it's Python 3.7.9. Now, this is true for me on a Mac, right? Because I also have a different version of Python 3 installed, right? So I have a bunch of different versions of Python on my local system and I believe the installers are intelligent enough that Python 3 will also be the newest version of Python, where if you are a little bit more specific to the version, it's gonna show that one. But anyway, so, so that actually gives us Python, which is great. Now we just need to use that built-in module to create a virtual environment. But before I do, this is what I wanna test out with you. And I wanna make sure that pip is installed. Now that I have Python, we have something called the Python package installer. That's what pip is. If for some reason that's not working, you can do something like that, Python 3. Let me just bring that back up. You can do Python 3-pip, and that's the same thing, right? So, and if you're on Windows, you're probably gonna end up using just Python-pip. So, making sure that you have Python-v, whatever that number is, hopefully it's 3.7, and just remembering that if you are on a Mac, actually typing out 3.7 is gonna be your best bet. Okay, cool. So pip, the package installer, comes in two flavors as well, pip3 as well as pip. So definitely gets a little confusing, and this is where the version things come in, and this is why we use virtual environments, because it helps remove some of that confusion. But the idea here is if I do pip freeze, on my system, it has a, well, a few things already installed. And these things might be in conflict with my packages. And if I do pip3 freeze, I'll probably see, well, in this case, it's the exact same things that are installed. But what if I did Python 3.7-m pip freeze and I took a look here? There are different things that are installed with different versions, right? So this is the key thing here is we want to isolate our code and isolate the versions to our particular project. And now these versions, I, I didn't personally install them. I don't remember installing these things, so I don't actually know what's going on here. I could probably make a guess and I could probably look into it but we don't need to worry about that right now. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna be in the root of our project, which was the folder here, that dev folder that we created. Of course, the same place as our VS code here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use Python 3.7-m as in module. This is a built-in module, much like we saw with pip. This one is V-E-N-V, -E and that stands for virtual environment. It's just a shortened way to write virtual environment. And we're gonna put period here, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And so this actually creates my first virtual environment. But realistically, this is actually not where I want it. I will change it, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create a virtual environment. Now what I'm gonna do is actually hit make directory of app, and then I'm gonna CD into app, and I'm gonna do that all over again, the exact same thing. And it's gonna create it, it takes a moment, and there it is, okay? So I now have two places for my virtual environment. And what we notice here is inside of my app, these pieces are grayed out, but inside of the root of the project, they are not. Um, so what I wanna do is actually delete the other virtual environment, and that's really simple. I can delete either one of them the same way. First we remove bin, then we remove include, and then we remove lib. I'll explain these things in a moment again. 
uh, remove all of lib, the entire folder, and py virtual environment configuration. We delete that. And what we see here is still 946 items being tracked. And that's actually because, in my case, it's grayed out. Yours might be green, it probably will be. That's because of our git ignore, right? So with our git ignore, we don't want our virtual environment stuff coming in here. So if I actually do git status, what I should see is, let's see where I'm at, is inside of the app, it's actually gonna try and track everything in that app. So yet again, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this folder. We wanna get really comfortable with doing this process of just deleting things. And just to make sure that my git status, oops, let me, um, I should have moved back. Let me uh, just go ahead and create a new terminal window here and just be inside of my project here. Um, now, if I do git status, we have nothing untracked, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory again. And this time it's called app. And again, I could have done it up here as well. And I'm gonna CD into app and I'm just gonna go ahead and touch main.py, which you know creates it. Um, if you're on Windows Touch, I don't believe it works, uh, but you could just go ahead and create that file up here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and say, hashtag hello world, um, that's it, right? So I just added a little thing into this Python file. We'll, we'll address that later. But now if I do git status, I see that again, it's trying to create that folder or that folder was created. So I'm gonna go ahead and do git add dash dash all, git commit and initial um, app, something like that, right? Again, we don't have that virtual environment because I completely deleted it. So let's go ahead and create that virtual environment again. So Python 3.7, or if you're on Windows, it's probably just gonna be Python. Python 3.7 dash M, V, E and V, period. Hit enter. And again, here are all of those virtual environment folders. And if I do git status, I see that those are in there. So now I can actually add these into my git ignore file here, right? Because I don't want the virtual environment to track these things. So if I save that git ignore and do git status, I shouldn't actually have those files coming in any longer, right? And the reason that it's um, not in the root here is because of the fact that I'm inside of the app. That's why it says dot, 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 slash git ignore, right? So if I go back into the root of it where the git repository is, remember, it's right here. And now if I do git status, it shows me the correct git ignore. Um, so this will not track any folder named bin, lib, or any file named pi vemv cfg, which is config. Uh, another thing I wanna actually add in here is the include folder. Uh, it doesn't have anything currently, but I do wanna get rid of it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually use our virtual environment and see why I actually have this ability um, or why I'm actually using this. So if I go into the app itself and then do source bin slash activate, now that's true for us uh, Mac and Linux users. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be dot slash scripts slash activate to activate your virtual environment. And what we do in here is now if I type out simply Python dash capital V, I actually see Python 3.7.9, and if I do which Python, this should also show me that it's giving me the version of Python in this virtual environment. It is based off of the one inside of this bin folder and in here. Now these are probably shortcutted to other places, but what isn't necessarily shortcutted is gonna be the actual packages that we install. So if I do pip install fast API, this is actually how I get that package inside of my virtual environment. And that will go inside a lib here. And there it is right there. So as you notice, this is all of the code that's coming from this particular package. There's all kinds of package. So we can actually look at these, the, the, the pieces of code that's in here. And yeah, I could totally make changes to it and it actually would work differently. It's probably a good idea to not do that inside of these site packages, but it is nice to know that it exists there. Now, these packages that are being installed on my Mac are gonna be slightly different, or they can be slightly different on a Windows, they can be slightly different on a Linux. So the idea here is we wanna have a virtual environment locally that we're working on with hopefully all of the same package information, but then we also wanna have a virtual environment in our production environment doing the same thing, sort of isolating the code as much as we possibly can. So that's it locally, right? So what we now need to do is actually bring this into production and have something um, 
for our actual virtual environment in production. And just to recap, we can deactivate our virtual environment like that. And whenever you see bin include lib, um, and I think there's another one for Windows, I think it's scripts, but we can also do source bin slash activate. Um, that's how you activate your virtual environment and we can do pip freeze. It's incredibly common to forget to activate your virtual environment. And then you're gonna run your application and be like, hey, it says it doesn't know about this, right? It's gonna be like, I don't know what fast API is. So let's actually take a look at that for just a moment. All I'm gonna do is a very simple import on main.py. I will certainly come back to this, but I wanted to show you the challenges of not activating your virtual environment. So here I am inside of the project with main.py with an import here. And if I write out Python 3 main.py, it's gonna give me this error. No module fat named fast API. Now, this is a simple fix, something that over time you'll definitely recognize. And that is there is no virtual environment activated, which is denoted by this right here. And it basically takes the name of the folder that it's in, and then that is the virtual environment. So if I activate this source bin slash activate, or again, if you're on Windows, it's script slash activate, then we run Python main, dot pi or python3 main dot pi uh, this time we don't necessarily get an error it doesn't really do anything but we don't have an import error of any kind and that's just a really simple way to test that so yeah there's a lot of things that could potentially go wrong with python and virtual environments and all these different versions now this is true for other programming languages as well um, they all handle versions a little bit differently. And if you're coming from like Node or Node.js and how package.json works, um, pip kind of works that way in a sense, um, but it's not exactly the same. So the general idea is to use a virtual environment to isolate our code and to make sure that we activate it when we are working in that code. I'll definitely remind you to activate it in the future. And I just removed the activated version anyway. So when in doubt, activate your virtual environment because you can't activate it too many times. Like that's just not possible. It, it will tell you that it's already activated, but you won't do it too many times. All right, so that's just a little bit of a review of installing Python and using a virtual environment. Now let's actually do the same thing in production because it's a little bit more tricky. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got a lot out of this one. And if you did, be sure to do a thumbs up and share this with a friend of yours that might get something out of it. Now, of course, if you do have questions or you wanna let us know about something else, please write it down in the comments below so myself or the Linode support team can actually help you diagnose some of these issues. Once again, I'm Justin, and I look forward to seeing you next time.